I'm, 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 I've got it completely complete about how you would uh, claim the, being the occupant of the office of general executor of the estate of yourself and uh, and so forth. Where where I have a question is. Now we have some authority with our children. How can we claim to be general executors of their estates and direct the affairs of them? Um, in it's sort of using the authority that as a parent that you have, and claiming that is particularly in front of them uh, a justice. Well, I think I think uh, the way the way to view it, and this has been a, an issue. Hmm. I, I, it has deeply affected me how the family courts have become the venue to steal children, yes? Mm, yes. And, and, and this has been, you know, good people have had children taken away because a hospital says they had cocaine in their system and later on finds wrong and, you know, all terrible stories. I believe the answer is, is, is this. Because we are intestate in their system, I believe we have never been able to convince the courts, particularly the sharpest courts, and the family courts are uh, typically the sharpest of all the courts as far as knowing how things work, to convince that we are effectively the general guardian of our children. We're not. We are the keeper of the children, but we are not the general guardians. That's the legal conundrum that they put us in. If you have recorded your will and testament and that you, are, you have nominated uh, the general executor, then the general executor holds also the power of general guardianship over any wards of the estate. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, your children are effectively wards of your estate until the... Um, well, the age of reason... Um, is the first age, but then obviously until the age of uh, majority, yeah? 18, I think, or something. Probably yeah. 14 yeah. starts. And... So your children um, technically under probate and estate law are wards of the estate until the age of majority. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I was. I had one question to layer on that is how, what, what would be the uh, producing a will for making wills for her children, could that uh, also strengthen it? Mm, well, not necessarily. If you effectively are the general executor and general guardian, and yeah. therefore, ipso facto, the guardian of the wards of the, of the estate, and your children are those wards, then don't you have all the power you need? You should, yeah, that's for sure. Now, with that being said, if, if one parent was doing this and the other parent wasn't, I mean, uh, that's where you know, if one parent is doing the will and claiming to be general executor of the children's estates, or uh, or are there being wards of your estate. Well, that, that would How certainly would that... be that would certainly solve the issue where, for example, the husband may come up and and have a custody issue, or any yeah. kind of messy um, separation. Um, yeah. It would strengthen the case of one, and weaken the case of the other. Yeah. Okay. All right, that that sort of answers that question. I'll hit you back later. On All a right, more. good on you. Thank you. No, good on you. All right, thank you for that question. And let's go to Ron. Real quick on the phone. Hello, Ron. Are you there? Hi, Cherry. Hi, Frank. Hey, Ron. Hello. How's it going? Good. <laughs> Good. Hey, um, I'm I'm mulling over my mind the the will and testament. Now, the will and testament is drawn up by the living man or woman, correct? Uh, I, I'm concerned by saying that. Let's just say it's drawn up. Let's keep it strictly within the rules of the game. It's drawn up by the testator. Okay, the testator. Testator. Yeah. Okay. Test data. That's right. Yeah. So, but in our language, that's the live man or woman at at this present time, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh. But but the re sorry, can I just interrupt? The reason I'm saying that is I want to I want to separate from anyone thinking their will is going to prove they're alive. That's a proof of life. It's a separate thing to doing a will. Separate right. totally. 
What I'm trying to drive at here, Frank, is that the testator draws up the will and testament. The testator signs, correct? Signs normally like normal people do, right? Yep. Okay. Now, in that document, we are going to appoint an executor, and then we are going to appoint uh, successor executors should the first one die, right? Correct. Okay. Now, the testator appoints the first executor, which happens to be the same person as no, the it's not the same person. Ends no, up being no, the general executor, right? Yeah, but can I just correct you because okay. this is important. I know. That's the same as okay. The big debate on Obama being um, an American citizen. All the discussion from Washington is that his person was born in America, yeah? Not the flesh. And that's the thing they miss. That the, the thing here is it's not the same person. The, the name may appear to be the same. And I know it sounds like it's like a dead parrot skit on Monty Python, you know, the parrot's dead, no, it's not. But I'm trying to get to the point it may look the same, it may be in all caps, but it's not the same person, right? Oh, I I know that, but I'm looking at it through the eyes of these people. And I'm looking at it as a a chink in our armor, you know, so they can pry at us, you know. I'm thinking, well, they're going to go, hey, you're the testator, but you're, you're still here, you're alive, but you appointed yourself as the executor. I'm having a hard time. Okay, well, let me. Let me let me take it this way. Let me come at it from this way. Okay. Is there any rule that prevents you from registering your will and testament as a deed today, as opposed to someone doing it for you when you die? Is there any rule in the in the statute of wills in any wills that say you cannot do that? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, there isn't. There isn't. Okay. If their system did not presume you to be intestate, then there wouldn't be an issue, would there? No. But if their system is operating on the presumption you are intestate and your will is registered, then what happens to their presumption? Well, it goes out the window. Great. Mission accomplished. So whether you're alive, dead, half living, half dead, here, there, in one piece, in five pieces, is irrelevant, isn't it? Yeah. Because we're only doing it to eliminate presumptions. And that's, if you want to theme for the last four weeks, it is eliminating their presumptions. Right. Effectively. That's why we're doing it wrong. Okay. I can and say... I would agree with you. I would agree with you. If, if they did not presume us intestate then logic and common sense would say, hey, you're still alive, yeah? Well, that's where but I come You and I know that the system doesn't legally, legally pr- presume us that way. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to, which we will be having to do, also create a proof of life, which we'll discuss next week. I don't want to confuse it, the issue, but that is part of, you know, again, addressing an issue here mm-hmm. in their system. But... Their system from everything, the courts are probate, they put us in test date, everything is pointing to the fact that they presume us dead, right? Well, you can also think about it uh, the way they handle us in court. They don't even see us. We have no standing, you know? Well, classic example, no will, in test date, courts have no standing. Right. So I, I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying, Ron, but, okay. but it's it's really to rebut their presumptions. That's the key. Okay. Yeah? Yep. All right. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Lynn. All right. Sorry about that, Ron. I know you'll be back on in a little bit. <laughs> Uh, to a little bit more. <laughs> Ron, I'm, I'm sorry for cutting you off real quick, but uh, 
Can you give more techniques or methods for accessing what you call the soul code? This is a question for you, Frank, uh, looks like on the chat. Uh, can I give more uh, techniques te or methods for accessing the soul code? Yeah. Um, read the canons. Read the journey of the UCA. Read the journey of, of, uh, of self. And then tell me how you feel. Because once you do that, um, it changes you. Look, part of the problem of life, for all of us, is that they hide truth around lies. In fact, they use lies to, to cover the truth. And the truth keeps the whole thing together, but the lies confuse us. And in any brain, I mean, our brain is a computer. You know, a, a, any computer has great difficulty trying to execute two, two commands that contradict one another. Now, the funny thing, and, and it is kind of funny, the funny thing about Eucadia is, and I've said this many times, if you approach Eucadia purely as a model, to our brain, it doesn't matter whether Eucadia is true or not. That's the funny thing. It doesn't matter. If Eucadia provides a good enough model, then that is what our brain needs to make sense of the world. So if you want to access deeper power in yourself, in your soul, give your brain a model that makes better sense of the world. And you don't have to believe it to be true. I'm not asking you to believe it to be true. But Eucadia is designed over a quarter of a century to be a comprehensive model that seeks not to contradict itself. Okay? All right. All right. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Frank. I'm hearing an echo now, but it might just be on my end. So I'm not sure if anybody else is hearing an echo. All right, let's go another call, for another question from Alpha. Hello, Alpha, you there? Hey. Yes, I am. I'm just following Ron's example. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, I was going to ask a question about uh, how you'd handle uh, previous legal determinations when you're absent, when you didn't know what, who you were have the knowledge that you have, how you could go back and undo these previous rulings, particularly regarding family matters. I'm just wondering what you have to say on that one. Well, there's two things that you need to do as a general executor. Me being a general executor, it's actually a, a bigger challenge to be a general executor than it is to be a slave or a trustee. Because if you want to take control of your affairs, you need to step up and, and be competent and you need to be knowledgeable. And you, and you ultimately do need to manage your affairs. So one of the things that you are able to do as a general executor in their system is you're able to time travel. And the reason you're able to time travel is that they could not, without putting themselves in an impossible position, they could not close off the possibility that someone wakes up down the road and has the right to clean up the mistakes, nunk pro tunk, that is now as then. And the reason for that is, and we don't say this enough, your parents didn't sign the pieces of paper to bond you into slavery, did they? No. It was never the intention of your parents, was it? No, not at all. And it was never the intention of your parents that you would fall into intestate from the age of seven, was it? No. So no, you are given the opportunity to correct the record and correct the mistake, yes? Yes. And therefore, as general executive, and we will have material for this, it's just, it's what, you know, talk about time travel, I wish I could time travel and get a few more weeks, but... What you will be able to do is simply state in a very logical way that non pro tunk now is then that you call for a tracing, which is a forensic accounting of all the 
activities of the trustees.